Hey, it's Chris, Legion Games. Let's do this. So, what do you do when one of the largest video content makers in your hobby puts out the same video that you were thinking of doing that you had already filmed 24 hours before you have it done? You revamp things, right? So, let's talk about it for a second. Kingdoms Forlorn from Into the Unknown. This soul operative, as the coined term that they're using, boss battling, delving, clashing game. Now, I use those terms specifically because those are the nuanced terms that this game is going for in this semi-roguelike dungeon crawl, KDM cross, if you will. I've looked at the rule book so far. I haven't gotten through it. I just got it sent to me less than 24 hours before filming this, and it's 47 pages long. So, it's massive. But... At the beginning here, I'm going to give you a few thoughts on it so far. Because there are a few things that stick out to me already that is going to help you figure out, even from right now, before you even get to see inside of this shiny... It's not really shiny, it's a metaphorical use referencing Lord of the Rings, if you will. Whether or not it's going to be something for you. So let's talk about this for a second. First up, very first thing. You are going to be able to jump in and jump out. That is, right from the get-go, they make it very apparent in this game of what you're going to be doing. As always, timestamps, I'll put them below if you want to skip to, you know, the actual physical content closer up here. When you are going adventuring, delving, as they call it, through the various situations, locales, enemies, finally bosses, you're going to be taking one of your knights, if you will, and you are going to be able to jump in and jump out at liberty. So if you're concerned about your various knight, whichever you want to choose from of the four that were given here, well, you can. You can jump into someone else's game at a convention. You can jump into someone else's game that you are like 30 games in and that one is their very first and it's going to balance it out. It's going to give you the equilibrium that you need to... Not having it be one of the... You know, World of Warcraft, if you're familiar with that online system where people would piggyback, low levels would piggyback with the higher levels so that they could get the better gear, so that they could get the better, you know, circumstances, the raids, the dungeons completed when they just weren't up for it in the first place. You know, riding on the coattails, if you will. And they say that they're taking care of that. So if that appeals to you... Because, I mean, that's the big problem with some of these larger campaign-esque games. You're sort of jumping into someone else's game. I mean, I'm looking at a copy of Tainted Grail right here off camera. And, you know, if you want to jump in with somebody else, well, you're just jumping in where they're at with what they're at. And, you know, you can do it. You can do it with these things, but it doesn't always work smoothly. So if they can accomplish that with something like this, that's impressive. It is. The second thing that you should know and I think this is the big problem when you deal with, these are the little uh, area tiles, if you will. You can see, like, the building on the back of this. And they're all different sizes, and you're going to be combining them. Is that when you play a video game, when you play a board game, when you play a campaign game, the biggest problem with a campaign game like this, if you look at something like Pandemic Legacy, if you're looking at... Uh, something like My City, whatever it may be, Tainted Grail, you get to the point and the game ends. You finish the campaign and you go, great, awesome, great experience. Can I resell it now? <laughs> uh, do I trash it? Do I frame my board for Pandemic Legacy and put it on the wall so we can remember it fondly or maybe not as fondly depending on how you did? Well, they're saying that they're going to address this from a post-game standpoint. Meaning, you get to the end, and then, don't worry, there's still a lot more of stuff that you can actually do. More customization, more monsters, more challenges, more enemies, more scenarios. And, let's say, you finish everything. Then, there's going to be lasting ramifications of your character in the world when the other ones are in that, or if you start a new character. If you, again, are more familiar with the video game side of things, where video games, they have the little 
you know, new game plus, that's essentially, it sounds like, what they're going for. Which is exciting. We're seeing a lot of interesting mechanics lately that are being ported over from the video game side. I'm especially intrigued with things like this that are doing something unique. Not only because it's bringing it to this, but you're going to see iterations and variations of it inevitably down the line too. Does that sound interesting to you? A campaign game where this might be the campaign game you need for the longest time? Interesting. The third interesting point, before we get into the actual nitty gritty of why you may want to watch this video to see the actual physical side of things. I've got two of the enemy sheets here. Very, very interesting enemy sheets. The Iron Cast Dead, right here, which are, I'm assuming, your generic sort of like non-boss level enemies. And then you have the boss in this scenario, who is known as the Egg Knight. And all I'm going to tell you about the Egg Knight is he bleeds yellow. <laughs> Why does that matter? Well, let's talk about that for just a second. The enemies and the heroes. If you're not familiar with Aeon Trespass Odyssey into the Unknown's previous game, when you have these good guys and you have the bad guys going back and forth, as the battle ramps up, it heats up, things are swinging, limbs are being chopped off, it's tis just a flesh wound, and that sort of escalation. Well, the problem with some of those games in general or the situation that you find yourselves in is that all of a sudden someone's getting, you know, ahead, 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 and then it becomes inevitable that you're just going to win, right? And it sort of becomes anticlimactic. I mean, the whole reason we tune in the movies, the whole reason I like hard co-op games in the first place is, uh, you know, as an Amerithrash player, there is a degree of unpredictability that I find exciting, terrifying, and frankly, also at the same time, frustrating. <laughs> in a good way. And this combat system is the opposite of what you're used to. You get closer to death, you're going to get stronger, things are going to get more ridiculous. You're going to go more Super Saiyan as things ramp up in terms of how deep you are into the battling. And again, if that interests you, this system is going to do that as well. Okay, now let's get on to the uh, actual reason you showed up, but I thought we'd open it with a little bit of something different to give you a little bit of an aperitif, if you will. I'm throwing out my fancy terms today. Let's go. So I've got an angry toddler knocking on the door trying to get in while I'm doing this, but here you go. This is, as it says, Kingdoms Forlorn. Dragons, Devils, and Kings, the prototype into the unknown. Okay, so what do we got going on here? We'll move this out of the way completely. And we got a little bit of everything. Now these are... We'll get to those in a second. We'll put these aside just for a minute. We got some cards here. A little bit of gruesome, a little bit of uh, interesting. Heroic death. And then we got another stack of cards right here. And these are the mini cards. These aren't like full size. You can see the difference here. Uh, we got what we got going on here districts. It looks like sort of a city building if you will Interesting there. There's a few aspects on there that make me already start to wonder and Then this guy on this card you got a little bit of a Monty Python theme going on there almost Obviously we have um, a little bit of that dice uh, You know which looks like we have swords chalices broken chalices on here Let's pull these out a second so you can actually take a look at them. And then this white die is actually, what is this, a 10-sided die? Yeah. So you got the 10-sided die right here. And then you've got sort of the swords with the broken chalice there, if you can see that. And the red is the red is the same thing with just a little bit of difference. So I'm guessing some sort of combat, and there's even a side with nothing on it there as well. Now the interesting thing here is you have standees already now again the question will be i don't know campaign wise are you going to have all miniatures are you going to offer the option for acrylic standees because i think vagrant song did a magnificent job with what they've put out there in terms of these and these are these are pretty nice and they're double-sided and you can see again there's a couple different guys 
and they come with their own stands, and it looks like they're all numbered. So, like, uh, you're obviously going to be fighting multiple combatants at the same time here, it looks like, because these are all just numbered in order to differentiate them from each other. Okay, we've got some bigger cards. Ooh, bigger districts here. These are, like, almost tarot-sized cards, and this is the Stone Plaza. Again, those colored iconography in the upper left here and the lower right for you guys. Like, so right here. Got a little bit of a threat tracker. Threat and curse. Then even larger, even larger districts here. Uh, Panzerberg. And there's, looks like there's like at least one in all of these. This looks like there might be two in there. Extra large is what these are marked. Ooh, look at this, the night sheets. This is kind of interesting. On the back side, on the flip side. Here, let's pull this out, though, for a second. <laughs> I'm chuckling because I can already read the first night card on the uh, other side. You'll see what I mean in a second. <laughs> um, yeah, you're reading that right. It says egg night. What else do we got here besides the egg night? Iron cast dead. Iron cost de Icon cost? De I can't read this back upside down and backwards. Flesh cutter. Now if you take a look here, this happens to be Ser Sonk. You got a little text there. But then we also, if you go over here, you can see Hand Limit, Card Refresh, Refresh, Endurance, Cunning, Fury, Wisdom, all of these stats. Four, I'm assuming, is Speed. Ten is Hearts. I'm assuming that's Health. And then it kind of goes through the abilities here as well. So you can kind of see the different abilities. And then the Cunning down here with another Tracker at the bottom. So you can kind of see, again, a little bit of everything that's going on. So there's a lot of stuff going on in these cards in the first place. There's about four or five different symbols right here that are hard to make out from afar. So that's really interesting that there's so many in this such a small area. And looks like we have one, two, three, four of these characters. And then the others are sort of your enemies, I'm assuming. Which again, the Iron Cast Dead. And the aforementioned Egg Knight. Gosh, I'm going to be including Egg Knight in a lot of stuff now. Egg this, Egg that. Um, let's see what else we got. Let's go back to this. Larger size cards. These look like to be your attack cards, if you will. So we'll we'll open these up. These have a nice thread on them. So we can take a look. Again, a lot of information on the card itself there. I have not looked at the rule book yet, so I don't know what all of this stuff even means at this point. But targeting uh, closest knight. Uh, you can kind of go through all of these. There's a bunch. These are all different, too. Sword slash, sword thrust, double slash, knight slap, knight slap. Uh... Humpty Squat, uh, Backslash, Back Thrust, Night Scramble, Humpty Shake, Flurry of Slashes, Egg Butt, Poached Knight. So, I mean, these are all different. These are all like the AI deck, I'm assuming, for uh, the monsters. In the upper left, you can see the enemy that it is. In the upper right, I'm assuming that's like an initiative or an attack value or something. Because as you go deeper, you can see, again, uh, different thing. Different color, uh, different aspects on the card as a whole. You get even further in this card deck because, I mean, this is this is pretty thick. You get cards like this. That have a lot of text on them. Jacked. And it's a trait. So, a lot of things going on here. Uh, a few of the Iron Cast dead here, but then these are... This whole thing is the Egg Knight. That's pretty in, immense for the Egg Knight. We'll set, those, we'll set those aside a second. I'm assuming this other one is mostly the Iron cast dead then so we've got one little like saint card here that's double-sided that doesn't really go into a whole lot of detail but a lot of other text and different things happening during your attack roll essentially like some sort of ability or trait card and kind of see the different values there and then these you have a bunch of exploration here it looks like as well so these are all exploration cards they say on the back and they've got different text. I'm not showing you these. These have spoilers on them, I'm sure. And they're all titled differently. 
but you can see just glancing without giving you too much of an actual thing. There's a top that has what's happening, bottom, and then there are actually arrows on all sides of the cards too, so it may depend on where you're coming from or going from as well, maybe. And then we have similar cards. Uh, they're labeled BP and AI. So uh, for the Iron Cast Dead and his traits, I'm assuming. So we've got a little bit again. The Dark Ones being his AI deck here. Some of the ones I showed you earlier for the Egg Knight. And then the BP. I'm assuming these are like levels because they go one through three on that little blue shield there at the bottom on the back side. And then again, here's one of the ones in the front, the Bone Squire. So a lot going on there. Not too much though. It says body part though. It definitely is like KDM influenced or that aspect where you're going to maybe target body parts or deal damage to body parts and maybe get special effects or certain ramifications depending on what you hit. So what else we got here? Then we have uh, your really, really tiny road cards. Map cards, if you will. And then we got some other pieces over here. Oh, these are your night trackers, it looks like. Your character night trackers. So the red, I'm assuming, being health. The blue, it looks like some sort of might, and maybe the green, almost like an armor. It's kind of hard to see from afar what those little icons are in there. But it looks like there's four of them, one for each of the knights that we saw earlier. And they're all the same, so they must just be trackering along there. There's not, like, different health measures. They all go up to 14 for the health, or 15, uh, 14, and they all go to 9 for the blue and the green. So what else we got here? We got tokens, uh, a little bit of everything, some of these maps, I'm assuming, some of these other icons... Um, not a whole lot to see there. We got whatever this big circle is. That's sort of scary because in case you can't really make it out, I mean, those are all skeletons. <laughs> so that's interesting. And then we've got a little bit of other token iconography here. And then just a whole bunch of tokens, a whole bunch of different tokens here. So, and then we have the board. This is, whoa, this is bigger than I thought. So the interesting thing about this, when I look at it here, at the bottom, you've got sort of the AI cards where they're going to be going. A little hard to read with a split there, but it looks like you've got your variety of conditions. A3, whatever that is. AI discard. The BP cards that I was mentioning. BP discard. So you've got the setup there. But then if you look at the side of this board as well, you can see you've got numbers and letters right there. So you've got the letters going one way, and then you've got the numbers over along the side here as well. So it's going to be coordinated in some sort of combination. Now what? I don't know. Now let's get to the main attraction here, if I can figure out how to open this. So we've got the miniatures, I'm assuming. Oh, something broke off a little bit. Got a little bit of a knight shoulder piece or something there. As much padding as there is, there's always never enough. I'll probably do these in a different view, but you've got miniatures here. Little wizard sorcerer dude. Looks like we've got four in this box total. I totally forget what this thing is called. The little sword with the little spike thing on the end. Got a very interesting uh, person doing the spear here. And then we've got a guy with, like, a mini knight guy on his head. It's kind of hard to see there. That's one box. Let's take a look at the other one. If you guessed that if those are all the heroes, then, because we talked about there being four heroes. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. This, this must be the Egg Knight. Right? There we go. That's the Egg Knight. <laughs> sort of like a Gold Smoke Knight and an Egg Knight combined from, like, KDM, if you're familiar with that. Let's see, I think we got one more prize hidden in here. Nope. Nope, looks like that's it. Okay. Well, let's go back to my final thoughts here.